pass. Intercepted on the way, and that is Cody Sensaba. Cody does a great job of stepping in front of Corey Davis. Can we go all the way back to March 20th when you sign your two-year deal with the Steelers and just take me from that moment to where you are now heading into week 12? Oh, man, that was a very exciting day. Um, I never expected to sign with Pittsburgh as a free agent this offseason. I don't know what it was. I just, you know, didn't expect it. When they, when they called my agent, you know, I was all for it. And I came on a visit and met the coaches and got to tour the facility and all the stuff, and I fell in love with it. And I thought it was just a great opportunity. And, um, you know, I signed, and then a lot changed. You know, we drafted uh, Cam and B.A. Um, we brought in Joe. We brought in J.J. So, you know, a lot has changed. From, from when I originally signed, but man, it's been great, man, just getting to know the guys and being in the city and playing for this great organization. The culture is amazing. Um, this is my first time being eight and two at this point in my career, so that's truly a blessing. And it's just been amazing, happy to be here. Did you take maybe, maybe any of those moves personally or do you just have to kind of look past that? And oh no, in this business, you definitely can't take it personally. I mean, we're in the business of winning and you know, all the guys that we brought in can help us win and have helped us win so far. So, you know, I just looked at it as an opportunity to compete and, you know, play with some great guys. So I've enjoyed every moment of it. What's the best way to describe this group in the Steelers secondary? Oh man, a group that loves to compete and loves to have fun. I mean, we have a lot of guys across the board that could play and start other places, I feel. But, you know, it's only so many roster spots. So, you know, we kind of just have to get in where we fit in. And, you know, we just try to take advantage of our opportunities that we get, whether it's five players or 60 players, whatever it is, you just have to go out there and do your best to take advantage of your opportunities. I've heard you say it already this season. A lot of guys in the secondary talk about how valuable Carnell Lake is to Absolutely. getting you guys ready Absolutely. and to what you need to do. How much has he helped you just in the short time that you've had him as your position coach? Man, he's, he's been awesome, man. Um, and this is my sixth year. I feel like he's the best DB coach I've ever played for. So, you know, I've enjoyed every moment with him. You know, he played the game at a high level. He coaches at a high level. He expects um, excellence out of us and you know we just try to give it back. Going to the indie game against the Colts, Joe Hayden goes down, you step in, then it's a short week, you're the starter, you get ready for a Thursday night game. Was that a whirlwind for you? Was it slowed down? How did you get through maybe that tight window of having to be ready to go? Um, honestly, it was it was pretty slow for me because I had been preparing, you know, in this business, this going on my sixth season, I understand that at the drop of a dime, anything can change. So this whole season, I had just been preparing to play whenever the opportunity did come. I didn't know when it would come, but I knew at some point it would come. So uh, for eight weeks, I had just been preparing, you know. Kind of got frustrated because, you know, you want to be out there with the guys helping the team out. But, you know, it just wasn't my time yet. So, you know, and we were winning, so that helped too. Thursday night's game, you had one of the four interceptions. What did you see on yours and even maybe just beforehand when you guys were game planning and studying film, getting ready to face Tennessee? Um, I just seen I just seen the receiver chop his route down and I knew he was running in and I just kind of followed him. And Mariota, um, he actually looked me in my eye and I was surprised he threw it, but it was crazy because my last year in Tennessee was his rookie year. And I remember uh, before practice and after practice, I would catch passes from him every every day as much as I could. And I was like, man, this is going to come in handy sometime. I didn't know when it was going to be, but uh, it came in handy the other night. So it was, a, it was a great feeling, and it was even better that we won, of course. Of course. It's a big win, four interceptions, five sacks. Just what the defense was able to do, set aside from what the offense accomplished. Is it fun to play in games like that? It's prime time. It's the team that drafted you. Yeah, man, it was it was awesome. And I think I think people see how much joy we have playing with each other when one of us makes a play. We all celebrate together. You know, we're just all rooting for each other, man. Like I said, it's a lot of talent on the defense and the secondary, on this team in general. Like, even our offense is probably the most talented offense I've been around, man. It's just cool to see everybody making plays. And that's the great thing about winning, because when you win, it's enough for everybody. You don't have to be around the Steelers or Coach Tomlin long enough to hear him say, next man up or the standards is the standard. Absolutely. What do those two things mean to you? Uh, next man up means um, prepare to be the starter, because when your opportunity comes, along with the standard is the standard, you're expected to play as well as those guys that were in before you. And that's just, you know, we try to embody that day in and day out. That's how we coach it. That's how we practice. That's how we work. And, you know, it's just cool to see that come to fruition, you know, when the lights come on.
All right, switching outside of football, I know you're very passionate, you and your wife, about helping people in Haiti. Take me through what you guys have done and what kind of outreach um, people need to know about, really. Um, this past off season, we did two mission trips in Haiti. Um, we did one with Food for the Hungry, and we're actually doing a campaign right now where we're raising money um, to build a water well over there to help some of the kids and some of the families get clean water because when we were over there with Food for the Hungry, something that I learned was that a lot of young kids aren't able to attend school because they're fetching water all day because they have to walk five or six hours there and back to carry water. You know, so uh, that really touched, that really touched our heart. The other group we're working with is Souls for Souls. That was the group that we worked with for our mission trip last year, also for our honeymoon. So for our honeymoon, we went to the Dominican Republic and handed out shoes and clothes and backpacks and all that good stuff. And this past off season, we went to Haiti. I actually started learning some French Creole. So trying to get better at that for when we go back this off season. Very cool. And do you talk to your teammates about this? Maybe you spread the awareness just in case people don't know about things like this? Um, a little bit, but not as much because, you know, I haven't I haven't been here as long with these guys. Like when I was when I was spreading the word in Tennessee, I had been there for four sure. years. So, you know, there's a little bit more background there, but uh, I plan on being here for a long time. So definitely get the word out to this Pittsburgh community.